speech. This program is intended for mature audiences only and contains strong or potentially offensive language of an adult and sexual nature. So, listener discretion advised. The views and opinions expressed on the curvaceous bounty of Sin City do not reflect those of this station We're or its affiliates. Girl. All yeah. music, stories, yeah. and characters are the sole property of their creators and are protected yeah. under international yeah. copyright law. Sierra, Sweet Cheeks, Toxy, and Glitch are personalities put on for your entertainment. Their stories are real, their language is explicit, and their behavior is out fucking rages. If you can't take the heat, get the fuck out of the kitchen. Blasting to you straight out of Las Vegas, Nevada, it is the curvaceous bounty of Sin City, starring Sierra, Sweet Cheeks, Glitz, and Toxic. <laughs> and people around the world. <laughs> what? Do you know what's going on at the Tuscany right now? Let me tell you what is going on. This is the best thing ever. If I had known about this, I would have gone this week versus next. So everybody's checking in for our bash. And it turns out the convention that's there now is a bear convention. Yes. <laughs> and I was there the other night and um, I'm like, I'm just going to hang out here for a while. And um, my friend was there and she's like, I don't really think you're their um, type. I'm like, I don't need to be anybody's type. <laughs> I loved it. And a couple guys from there came last night to, um, to know. Last night was at Red Label, BBW Club Las Vegas at Red Label. And um, a couple guys came and it was great. So we have everyone checking in for this event. And then they still have the other event, which will overlap for a day. So tomorrow you will see me out there scouting out my new gay big hairy BFF. <laughs> I will hold up a sign, <laughs> you know, well, uh, best, best wingman you'll find. That's it. That's the <laughs> sign right there. You just wrote the sign. You basically wrote my life. <laughs> That's the opening to my biography. The title is Smile in an Ass. <laughs> so, so the, uh, in early, um, nice, yes, he'll be back up here. He went to pick up our guest. <laughs> he will have no problem doing that. <laughs> We will probably have to stop him. <laughs> Any chance that man has to show his junk, he will show his junk. So if I stop him, he'll whip it out. Absolutely. Yes, this one here. Let's there we go with big gay hairy men at the Tuscany. <laughs> Everybody heard Let's you. They didn't hear me. <laughs> That's okay if they didn't hear me. They they got the gist of it. Fuck them. So you're all checked in, huh? I'm well. I'm not checked in. I'm checking in tomorrow. Ah. Um, but I was there just helping out uh, the other night and um, enjoying myself. <laughs> <laughs> I had my daughter with me, and she was like, "There are a lot of guys here." <laughs> like, yes, they are. <laughs> yep, and I don't have to worry about them with you at all. Exactly. Go find mommy a best friend, okay? That's right. <laughs> Preferably a rich one. Right. You go walking around telling them your mommy's that big girl over there. Because <laughs> I'm a firm believer gay guys and fat girls go together like peanut butter and jelly. They do. So. If only because then the gay guy feels a little bit better about himself because his best friend's a fatty. <laughs> <laughs> so 
don't worry. Everything will be okay. My best friend's a fatty. <laughs> That's right. So you don't have to worry, honey. It's all good. It's all you don't good. have to worry. She's a fatty. I um I dropped my child off today out in mm. California. She's gonna be gone. The uh, she's gonna be flying somewhere, isn't she? Yes, to Disney World. Without you. Without me. Wow. I was very excited. This was our um our first time. There were no tears. On really? Her side. <laughs> on her as well. We and know you're no a giant. Tears until I pulled away, and I'm like, I held it together. I held it together. I'm doing that on Tuesday, dropping the boy and his dad off at the bus depot. Nice. Where are yeah. they going? California. Nice. He's got family out there, so they're gonna go see them for the week. I'm like, woot. Yeah, very um for me, very very difficult. I know she's safe and I know she's happy and she's very, very well cared for. Well, she's and probably not gonna think about you the whole probably time. Probably not. Yeah, probably not. And they're the perfect audience for her because she, you know, they they're working out schedules. For me, if I went to Disney World, I would be like when my fat ass rolls out of bed, I will <laughs> see what I feel like doing today and where I feel like going. And if it happens to roll out of bed at noon, so be it. <laughs> and so they literally have it scheduled down to we will eat here at this time. Wow. And then do this and then do that. So, of course, she's all excited. And she's like, and then what time is this? And then what time is this? And then what time do we go to this? And then where do we go? <laughs> is she going to Epcot? Um, yes, they're going to a ton of places. Ugh, I'm so, so jealous. They're, um, they're doing a safari excursion. Safari um, in Florida. Look, a gator. They're <laughs> doing something where they're hooked to ropes and going <clears throat> over some gators. And they cannot have their phones because somebody once dropped a phone in the water. Uh -oh. And the gator ate it and had to have surgery. Ah. So, so they have like a phone check-in booth right yes, there. That's you have awesome. to lock them in lockers and no cameras, nothing. And um, it's great. just hanging on by a thread over some hungry gators. That's it. Just hanging on by a string. And uh, my mother-in-law is the sweetest because uh, I told my daughter, my daughter's like, what if I fall in? And I said, um, you know, because we only have the one. <laughs> and I said, well, we still have the dog. So... <laughs> And she um she hates that because she is not a fan of the dog. No. <laughs> or when we call the dog her brother, that is very upsetting to her. Did she ever so, want siblings? No, she does not want no. Mine pesters me for no. siblings all the time. Yes, no. Mine has five cousins, five younger cousins mm -hmm. who live close enough that she will never desire siblings in her <laughs> life. <laughs> and we've we've talked about it. And we've talked about it very recently as well. And absolutely because mr toxie's got like baby fever doesn't he he does he does unfortunately his wife does not so <laughs> that makes a little bit of an awkward circumstance yeah <laughs> well like the oven's closed for business his bakery's over <laughs> bakery's done right so um yes but then my mother-in-law is the sweetest because she reassured my daughter that if she did fall in that she would jump in after her. Oh, not so. something mom would do. No. I would be like, <laughs> bye, baby. No. I love you. We still have the puppy. We love you. We still have the dog. <laughs> Tank's getting your room okay. <laughs> you don't mind, right? Why don't you move the skittish cat into that room? Then get her out from under your feet. I know. I know. We actually just um just had to put our oldest cat to sleep two days ago. Aw. Very sad. That She's is almost sad. She's 15. Well, that's a good long life for a kitty cat. Very good long life. That cat led a good life. She used to have birthday parties. <laughs> Back before we had a child, she was the child. She was the child. And she had birthday parties and presents and wow. all of that. I am not that kind of pet parent. I'm not now. <laughs> <laughs> But um, you I know, never really but... was. Occasionally I get my dog like a really expensive treat from the dog store or something, and that's yeah. it. No, at one point in time, I was that person. Like, hey, come to my cat's birthday party. But uh, I'm like, is there going to be alcohol? <laughs> Have you met me? <laughs> <laughs> Jaeger bombs for Tootsie Pop. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going? Are you going over um, this week? Maybe. I still have to work this week because I am taking my entire vacation in November plus an extra week. Um, so I'm not going to be going every single night. I actually, I think my first night there might be Thursday when we broadcast. Oh. 
So okay. because I still have to work, I still have to be up at six o'clock in the morning. I can't be swimming at two a.m. and get to work and be functional. Are you sure? So yeah, I'm pretty sure. But I have no child Friday or Saturday. I am going, and we don't have any broadcast Friday night. So I'm probably going to get well toasted. Okay. I haven't gotten good and schnookered in a long time. Me neither. What's it been like? Fourteen <laughs> hours. <laughs> I saw the post. I actually only had two drinks last night. Really? Uh, well, were you driving? Were you yes. driving? Yes. So we, we, uh, my friends and I each had two drinks when we got there, and then drank a lot of water for the next four hours, and um, and that was it. And I, then I went home and had to pack mm. and make um, I make little cards for my daughter daily like little jokes and stickers and all that. So I had to do that. <laughs> Go to bed at 5.30, get up at 7.30 to drive her to California. <laughs> That's nice. So well, I'm going to... We're gonna... running on a two hours. Yeah, I'm going to be packing my son up tomorrow night. He leaves Tuesday morning. I have to have them at the bus station at 6 a.m. So I have to be up at like 5. How can that happen? Does a bus even run at that time? Oh, the buses leave here. The Greyhound leaves here once every hour for somewhere. For somewhere. And for and to go to L.A., it's like once every half hour. People are always going to L.A. from here. Have they tried the mega bus? Uh, I don't think they have. Uh, he usually, he's cheap, so he just grabs the Greyhound. The mega bus, cheap. We did it once and it was so cheap. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then we didn't have to worry about the traffic and everything going to my in-laws. So nice. It was definitely uh, nice and cheap. I believe um, because there were some major things happening on the 15 coming back. So I mm. believe I'm assuming Sweet Cheeks is uh, kind of caught in there. Probably. So she will um, not be not be joining us tonight. That's right. We but, got um, this. We got it. We're good. We could talk about soccer that I don't watch. What? I'm 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 a little depressed. I really wanted the Netherlands to win because I wanted it to be a bunch of blonde haired, blue eyed dudes kicking balls at each other for the final World Cup. And it turns out that it's going to be a bunch of South Americans kicking blonde, kicking the asses of a bunch of blonde haired, blue eyed dudes. Because let's face dudes it, kicking balls just really I don't know does something for me. <laughs> well, here's what I want to know. So I watched a little bit of soccer. I don't say I watched it live. I watched clips online, like right. really good things. What is it with soccer people, especially grown ass men soccer people who like stub their toe on a clump of grass and act like they just broke every bone in their leg? It's men, watch women's soccer, you will not see that. You won't see that. We even even in kids soccer, we play um my daughter previously played in both a boys league and a girls league. And the girls <laughs> league, like their arm will be hanging off and they're like, No, I don't want to come out yet. Yeah. My daughter had full on been like stepped on the face and you know, jacked in the side, and she's like, I'm good. She sprained a toe. She's like, I'm not leaving. Um, she, you know, she played in the goal with, with sprained fingers taped together, and she's like, I got this. I got this. The boys, you bump into them, they drop and cry. And I think it's a, um, a lot of times they do it. I, I really believe they're trained that way. Really? Because if they do it, then you can, they can get a call against Mm. the other team or whereas the girls are like that. we don't need no calls that wasn't a foul i'm gonna kick your We're ass good. later <laughs> We're good. you know we have girls that you know that'll like come and shove our girls down and that little girl's out there and she's like i'm getting up don't worry keep keep the game going <laughs> nose is <laughs> all to it, the side you know? <laughs> nose is a little broke but you know and they, they keep going but we did it once we were playing this one league and this boy right in front I mean, a girl was not even near him, and he dropped and rolled and cried. And so they called a foul, so we got a penalty kick and immediately jumped up and started cheering because he, he had a chance right in front of the goal to hmm. do a penalty kick, which my child stopped. So There you go. You know. Ass kicker. <laughs> Only cheered for so long. Right? <laughs> cheered just long enough for the tears to Come start. On, tell your boys, do not do the drop and cry. And then they do it. And adults. It's crazy. I saw one guy jump over another guy. And he, he didn't even touch the other guy. He fell down, rolled, did like a perfect somersault, like gymnastics forward roll, stood up, and then grabbed his ankle. And I was like, you didn't even hit your, like, anything towards the bottom of you on the ground. Ugh. 
men, men in soccer. Hey, we have just to let you know, let everybody out there know, we have David, Dave B. Soul. He, he will be in the studio here shortly. And, he was on um, at the beginning of the season. He was. He was on earlier this season. He's from the, the East Coast, so he was on via Skype, but he is here live and in person. I uh, got to hang out with him a bit last night. He is pretty freaking awesome. Yeah. So excited to uh, have him in here, hear what he has going on. And um, that yeah. is very exciting. Very exciting. I heard he was animated. He's very animated. That should He's be fun. Pretty awesome. So anything else going on in the news you want to talk about today? Um, I haven't seen this today. <laughs> You've been driving all day today. I've been driving all day. What, what's see. going on? I don't know. I, I've been playing video games and cleaning my house all day. So that's literally what we were doing. We spent the morning playing video games and we spent the afternoon cleaning house. That's that's, awesome. that's how I that like I I told my son, he asked me last night, he said, if I get up before you. I said, okay. He goes, can I go downstairs? And after I feed the dog, can I play the Wii? And I'm like, sure. And he goes, okay. So I got up at 645 to pee and I heard something in the living room. I go downstairs. My son is already up. The dog has already been fed and he's playing video games at 645 this morning. That will never happen in my house. Oh, see, my boy is up between 6 and 645 <gasps> every day, no matter what. No. But he does not wake me up unless I tell him to. He knows better. Wow. Got him trained no, right. Mine is a mini me. She, um, I mean, I'm not kidding. We have had to, and my parents did this when I was little, although my mom wasn't as nice. She would fling shoes at me. Um, <laughs> but I have like dripped a little water on her head before trying to get her up. Mm -hmm. And she, she is not a morning person, but you know, come nighttime, she's like, I'm ready. Well, I got, Kelly, I want to know if it's just the two of you. Can you get Toxie to come around to your side so we can see both on cam? Well, I suppose, except that you'd only see the back of my head and the front of hers. <laughs> it would make, you know, almost one whole person. He's so, uh, he likes to see me so much. <laughs> it's really hard to get. Nope, I can't even do it that way. What if I go around there? Yeah, you could come sit over here, wherever you want to sit. Um... Plug my. Well, you can use my computer for the chat. I have to do some. Oh, I have my new plugin. Hello, everyone. So I'm gonna look up some news real quick because we don't have much else to talk about. Because all I've been doing all weekend is cleaning and getting ready to get rid of my kid for a week. It's so fun. My my son has not been spending a lot of time with his dad because his dad works retail. And during the summer, that means you work weekends. So I've been having him every weekend for like months now. And I probably will until fall rolls around. He's so excited to be with his dad for a whole week. He's like, it's going to be a whole week. I said, yes, yes, it is. His dad was like, do I have to have him the whole week? I said, yes. <laughs> yes, you do. I told you months ago that you needed to take these days off. And I've reminded you every week since then. Uh, no thanks. Yeah, we'll show us. Yeah. Yeah, we can see you. This is interesting. How do you feel sitting down there? In the guest seat. Have you ever sat in the guest seat? No. No, you've always been a host. Let's see. Oh, we I should have... mention really quick that both Sierra and Sweet Cheeks are up for an award. We are. We've been nominated and for a, a independent host, independent media host, or media something host. like that. Yeah. And this is the last weekend, I believe, for voting. So if you can all hop on our Facebook, vote for me, vote. not the other one. <laughs> no, really, I don't care. Vote for whoever you want. Vote for somebody. Yeah, I don't care. Vote for me. Vote for her. I don't really care. Just vote for someone from this show. That's right, because <laughs> someone from this show has to win. Because let me tell you something about the Diva and the BHM, the BBW and BHM Awards that uh, DJ Diva D puts on. They are exclusively of a single ethnicity. And that's awesome because sometimes I think the other awards that go on are a little too skewed towards the other direction. Um, but it is always nice to be the one salt grain in the pepper jar who wins. 
<laughs> Kelly guy has a picture he's going to text you. It's of a Toxy twin. A Toxy twin? Yes, I would like to see He that, is please. very good at finding people who are twins of people we already know. Just like random people in the... This gentleman was at the club last night and mm-hmm. he came up and he said... I'm really sorry I'm staring at you, but I think I work with you. What? I'm like, where do you work? And he told me, and I'm like, you not me. No. <laughs> like, oh, I really thought I worked with you. But I have, let me just tell you a sly little thing that I did, though. Oh. Uh-huh. So there was um a lot of people there last night at BBW Club Las Vegas. It was packed. A lot of people in from out of town. A lot of people who, you know, know us, watch our show. Um, there was this very fine looking gentleman there, very fine. And a couple girls had commented like, wow, that gentleman is pretty fine. Someone we know. So no, I never seen him. I don't, he, he's not from here, but he, um, he was standing over to the side and, you know, my friend and I are sitting there and another girl came over and commented. She's like, wow, I wish I could talk to this guy. And so I, I only knew this girl, I, I've met her at Bash's before, so I didn't know her too well, but I said, let me make that happen. And I look over at the guy and I start calling him and I'm like, actually, I use, your, I use somebody's name that, uh, that came to mind. I go, Daniel, nice. Daniel, hey, hey, Daniel. And he turned and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. You're not Daniel. <laughs> So then they got to talking and everything is great. And, and they went off and they're talking for a bit. And then another girl comes over and she's talking to us. And she's like, gosh, that guy over there, you know, really good looking. And so I go, hey, and he had told us his real name. And I, I called him over. I, get, I said, I'm so sorry for getting your name wrong. I apologize. You are not sorry was, at all. I was basically there just trying to hook up who I could. All these girls coming into town. I'm like, let me show you how Vegas does it. <laughs> <laughs> it's one night, baby. Making it happen. The risks of oral sex. So I, I have a, I use this app called Zite. I love it. It's like having a magazine on your phone. Except it's um, a bunch of them. Holy crap, she could be your sister. Ooh. She could be, and she might be. <laughs> <laughs> Would you get sisters you don't know? Yeah, that is the truth. So, yes, she very well could be. She looks a lot like my son's teacher, too. His uh, second grade teacher. I love you, Callie guy. Such an involved person. So I love Zite, because I can set it to give me different lists of news articles that have happened recently. Mm-hmm. One of the lists I have labeled is sex, because... We talk about that a lot. 20 pieces of clothing that look like vaginas. That's close. Not all women are crazy and not all men are dicks. Well, we knew that. What? No. (laughs) The women part? What? No, there are... Every woman is crazy. It's just the degree to which she lets the crazy little envious green girl out. That's... Some women are really good at keeping her locked in and locked down tight. Occasionally she comes out like when hormones are raging. Um, but for the most part, women can't keep that crazy girl locked because she's strong. She's a strong, strong girl, that crazy bitch. She'll get out any goddamn way she can, too. You got to be on top of that shit. Speaking of 13 signs, he's 13 signs he's never going to commit. Commit what? Murder? (laughs) Can you get chlamydia from oral sex? Yes. Yes, you can. What was, um... Oh, gosh. Somebody had posted something about um, peeing after sex does not eliminate the chance of you getting pregnant. No, it does not. It does, however, um, reduce your risks of UTIs. My one and only really serious UTI I've ever had, I got from rough, crazy, dirty, nasty sex. Wait, tell us more. And I was dating this guy who was Lebanese. And (laughs) did I say more? Um... So, but my doctor, my little Jewish doctor was like, if you pee after you have sex, if you pee before you have sex and you pee after you have sex, your risk of getting a UTI is much lower unless you're doing the really crazy stuff or his hands are dirty and then there's no hold sparred. Like, so he okay. had dirty, dirty hands. No, it was just really long, 
juicy, dirty sex. And we had to take a couple of breaks. And I ended up with UTI. Pretty bad one. Uh, let's see. How about you? Have you ever gotten a UTI from sex? Um, no. Apparently I don't have... I ha my sex must be too clean. <laughs> Meet Auntie Angel, creator you of the amazing... Get, you can't get UTIs in missionary positions, so... <laughs> okay, then. Uh, creator of the amazing grapefruit blowjob. Grapefruit blowjob. See her lesson on the grapefruit technique. I don't even like grapefruits. Why would I include them in my oral sex? Women perceive other women in red as more sexually receptive. Do you think that? Do you think that women in, when you see a girl in red, you're like, oh, she is a dirty slut. Do you see that? Well, I think women in red is uh, kind of associated with like, oh, that's hot. I think we're kind of, uh, yeah, you know, maybe. Maybe, yeah. Maybe, I don't know. Let's get someone in here in red. See, let's see what happens. <sighs> The sexual politics of autism. That's not something I want to discuss on the show. The 11 emotional stages of buying a sex toy. I would like to discuss that one. The first one is excitement. Sex toys. Fuck yeah. Let's do this. <laughs> Planning. Thank God I price shopped online first. Deals. You are mine. Pro tip, if what you're buying plugs in, make sure your bedroom can accommodate it. You don't want to have to plug into the same outlet you use for the blender and run an extension cord. Concern. Will this be the will this be a palace of creepiness such as I have seen in horror movies and pornographic films of the seventies? Perhaps a store that touts a supportive environment, burns candles and fills the air with Yanni and Kenny G will be better. This is much worse. Confusion. Nothing makes sense. Why should I really care if the cl clitoral stimulator is one hundred percent biodegradable and cruelty free? What exactly does that pinwheel thing with the eyes on it do? Is that a rubber mouth with vampire fangs? It is. It is a rubber mouth with fangs. There's an alien one next to it and a dick made to look like a zombie. Is that, is that also 100% cruelty free? <laughs> Number five, ambivalence. There's an employee wandering around and he looks like he wants to answer my questions. He's also rocking cat eye glasses, a leather vest, and a tricolor mohawk. I think he has a tattoo with the words, I know more about sex and I'm much cooler about it than you somewhere on his body in cursive. But there's no telling for sure. I'll just look busy with this water-based lubricant. No eye contact. No eye contact. This sounds like you wrote this <laughs> after visiting a sex I'm store. Like, what is that? What is the name of the author there? <laughs> <laughs> Shame. No, I don't need help. Thank you. Or a lecture on sex positivity, which sounds awesome in theory, but something I'd prefer to be positive about in private, not in front of strangers. I just wanted to know how much this sparkle whip costs. It's not not its diameter <laughs> uh, let's see resolve fuck it I'm here to buy a sex I'm here to buy a sex toy so is everyone else no one wandered in here by accident you know what I want to know if someone ever does just accidentally walk in the wrong door and they're like oh dildos well while I'm here well they could I mean the love boutique you never know what they have in there yeah the love boutique's like right next to a furniture store which kind of makes sense I mean, it could in. be candles and dildo. <laughs> Number eight is shame again. Okay, I think I've settled on this one. Is this what you want? Yes. Will there be anything else? No. I feel like I'm at a fancy restaurant and I've just ordered the wrong wine. Should there be something else? Vindication. I bought the damn thing and now I'm going to take it home and get it on. <laughs> Number ten is apprehension. Shit. Why do they give you a giant black bag that screams there's 10 inches in here? Who the fuck buys 10 inches at the dildo store? Why do you need 10 inches of dildo? That's a lot of dildo. I mean, what what size do you go for? Are you like the, give me the 6 inch? What? Yeah, I am. I'm like 6 to 8 inches, maybe. Like, I don't want it too You're big. You're very specific. I am. I go in and look for what's on sale. <laughs> I'm like, can you show me a clearance aisle? I call my friend and say, hey, I'm coming into your store today. I want the manager's discount. Okay. Like, ultimately, ultimately, it's all going to do the same thing with the same end result. So that's true. Okay, send me to your clearance aisle. <laughs> Mama's cheap. Number 11 is either exultation or disappointment. Phew. 
No one accosted me on the street to ask what I bought, and now to engage in some me-slash-us time. What, this doesn't come with batteries? Well, at least they do sell those at Dwayne Reed. This must be somebody from the East Coast. Oh, look, right there. It says, this was written by Mrs. Toxie. <laughs> Brief history of the rabbit. Come on, I want like 13 crazy sex... sexual craziness. Uh, if you have a suggestion for us on a, something you'd like us to discuss, send it in. I have this um, a feed that I follow on Twitter. It's OMG Facts Sex. I love OMG Facts. And I do too, but I, spe I specifically really love the sex one. Like, women reach orgasm 80% of the time while wearing socks versus 50% without. World's fattest woman has sex seven times a day. This is a YouTube video, people. Google it. Fat sex talk positions. What everyone wants to ask but is afraid to ask. How to have sex with a fat. A wild fat. A short guide to sexy fun for fatties. Uh, you put the penis in the vagina. There's nothing different about having sex with fat people, I don't think. Maybe well, sometimes you have to why. move something a little here's bit out why. of the way. Because you're not fat fat. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, I'm don't really have you know problems either right problems or anything but i do know that um for example at the well-rounded event they are specifically having a seminar on fat sex because sometimes and i think it also depends on your partner mm -hmm. and maybe um size might be a factor as well and so sometimes you know it, it works better with pillows or seats or in a different position or direction and yeah sometimes you gotta shift some stuff around i believe in stretching before sex limber up do you really get ready to go um do you i actually you're like, do hold on back off babe get <laughs> off me a moment i need to do some calisthenics no uh, if i know that we're going to be in for like some crazy whip me around throw me up and down kind of sex i will do a little bit of stretching while i'm ready for uh, well, usually there's no waiting for him to get ready because it's like, I like, okay, I got to go pee before I have sex so that I don't get a UTI. And it takes me like two seconds. I come back and he's naked in bed because right. that's how guys are. I mean, he could have on a 12-piece a business suit with a bow tie, a cummerbund, yeah. and all those little black buttons that go in the tuxedo top. And he could be completely naked, have everything folded or hung up and back in the closet by the time I got back from having to pee. Yeah, Mr. Toxie as well. He'll be a... Uh... Ready to go. Are we ready to start now? All right, we're good. <laughs> He's like, okay, penis. <laughs> Here is um, Kelly Guy said, I'd love to hear each of your stories about the most focused, dedicated BBW admirer you have encountered or been with. Well, mine is Kelly Guy. I don't need to tell any stories. I've told them all already. <laughs> like most of the guys that I've ever been with are just like, yeah, sure, I'll do a fat girl. Like <laughs> they don't really like specifically search out big girls, but I never, I was never deterred when i was dating by guys who said you know who didn't specifically mention my height or weight or uh in in their description of what they're looking for online because i dated online mostly <laughs> so i would just go for it i'd send people emails be like hey i like to go off-roading and i drink whiskey do you want to go on a date with me that usually won me a good date <laughs> so off-roading and whiskey yes okay. I shall remember that for when I'm whiskey. not Single? dating. <laughs> I don't know. How about you? I've been married 15 freaking years, so I don't even remember. <laughs> dating, no. I have no clue. <laughs> Your turn. Dedicated turn. admirer. BBW. I don't, you know, I don't. Oh, okay. I do. Um. I have a friend that we have been friends for, gosh, five, six years. And I didn't, before I got in the BBW, like the community, I didn't actually know there was a community. Mm -hmm. I, I just thought like, I'm basically one of three fat people out there. And I didn't know, <laughs> you know, that they get together. I didn't know that there were admirers. So when I first got into the community, my friend had this gentleman friend he's actually um it's been months but he chatted on the show once and he was really into my thighs and so he would um always he would ask first 
So he would always sit there and rub my thighs. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I just remember, you know, one time we're out at um, out at the pool. It was my very first time ever going to the bash. I was sort of sneaking in, if you will. <laughs> I bash crashed a couple of times. I was a bash crasher. And um, I just remember sitting there by the pool and he was like, you know, oh, I really, <laughs> I'm like, I don't, I mean, your hands are going to fall off at some point because you really should give him some workout, tanning oil, right? You should rub some shit up there. Right. But um, even when we had gone back to uh, my friend's room and I was going to shower and he, you know, made sure to sit down next to me and still it didn't bother me if it was, you know, if it was this thing, it, it worked, but he was. I mean, he was really into it. He was like going to rub my skin off. <laughs> wow. On that note, we're going to take a quick little break. Um, we'll be right back after these messages from our friends here on VegasAllNetRadio.com. <laughs> 